very good afternoon to one and all present here. Today, we, the students of second semester English department, are going to present a skit on Avigyana Shakuntala. As we all know, the play Avigyana Shakuntala is a classical Sanskrit drama written by ancient India's greatest poet and playwright Kalidasa. We, the students of second semester, have put an effort to present it in the form of a musical narrative using classical ragas. We hope this performance would surely catch your heart and entertain you. However, we humbly request you to ignore any flaws or mistakes. This is our department's first ever performance on this level. So we request every teacher from every faculty to acknowledge and appreciate our efforts so that we may bring before you better and bigger theatrical performances in our future. Now, let us invoke the Almighty by commencing the play through Aswaraswati Vandana. She was surrounded in the solitude of the wild by the Shakuntala. Hence, I name her Shakuntala, the one protected by Shakun Shakuntala. The other poems were uttered by Sage Kanva in the Adi Parva of Mahakala. He was the one who found baby Shakuntala alone and abundant in the form. He was the great sage Vishwamitra and the beautiful celestial. Daughter. The tale revolves around the love story of Shakuntala and the mighty king Dushan. Come, let's witness the magnum opus of the great author Kalidasa to a narrative. Once upon a time, King Dushanta went on a hunting expedition with his gesture as well as friend Madhavir. He was in pursuit of a deer when suddenly a voice warns him that the deer belonged to the hermitage and must not be killed. The hermit says, O oh king, this deer belongs to the hermitage. Why will you kill him? Don't strike the innocent. Bowing to him, the king says, It is done. The hermit in joy says, A deep worthy of you. Skion of Guru says, May you get a son who will do the entire world. The king says, I am very thankful for our brand new blessings. Okay, we are on the way to gather firewoods. Here, on the bank of Marini, you may see the hermitage of Sage Kanva, over which Shakuntala presides, so as to speak a guardian deity. By saying this, the hermit went up. Kanva, the father of the hermitage, was not there. Thank you. 
and Hermit girls came to perform their daily chores, and Dushanta's eyes got stuck on the emblem of beauty, that is Shakuntala. Accompanying her came two attendants, Anuswar and Priyambada, to pluck flowers for the offerings. Dushanta was enchanted by the beauty of Shakuntala. Meanwhile, Shakuntala is frightened by a bee that has been disturbing her. Dushanta envies the closeness of a bee to Shakuntala. The girls cry out for help and Dushanta steps out to help them. The girls are surprised to see Dushanta and Shakuntala is speechless. She thinks, simply at the sight of this man, I am shaken with such a passion. Dushanta introduces himself and claims to be the newly appointed minister of religion. Both Shakuntala and Dushanta started to feel the pangs for love for each other, but did not reveal anything. The next day, Shakuntala is stricken with heat stroke. The king, meanwhile, is depressed that there is no longer anything to keep him in the ashram. He decides to adapt, gazing at Shakuntala will only revive him. So he again went behind the woods to keep an eye on his lady love. Shakuntala was resting on a dog with Priyambada and Anuswan fanning him. The girls asked Shakuntala about her illness since it appears that she is feeling exactly what a woman in love is said to feel. The king went down and just to wait. After being insisted and both by Shri Anusuya and Priyambada, she expresses her feelings for Dushan. Shakuntala finally says, I could not tell anyone else since I saw the mighty Dushanta who protects the sacred group. I love him and it makes me feel like this. The two friends says, Good, good, you have found the love worthy of your devotion. The king, who was hiding and listening to all this, says joyfully, I have heard that I long to hear. Now, both the friends of Shakuntala started to think of a way for Shakuntala to express her love to Dushanta. They suggest her to write a letter to Dushanta by carving it on a leaf with her nails. Love on Shakuntala, while writing the letter, reads it loudly, which was also being heard by the king. The king says, Here stands the eagle lover. Shakuntala starts to read the letter. I know not if I read your heart all right. Why, pitiless, do you distress me so? I only know that longing day and night tosses my restless body to and fro, that yearns for you, the source of all its hope. The king too expresses his feelings. Love torments you from the wind, yet he consumes me quite. As daylight shuts my green flowers and slays the moon after, the king enters. Shakuntala tries to stand, the friends stand up. Dushanta enters. It surprises them all, making them aware that he has heard about the feelings of Shakuntala and reciprocates it. The king says, We cherish the same desire. I feel it a great honor. The king then reveals his true identity and proposes Shakuntala for a sacred Gandharva marriage. Shakuntala happily agrees to him. The very next day, the sacred marriage ceremony beautifully takes place in the hermitage under the river of nature.
The secret marriage took place successfully with blessings of nature and Mother Gordon, the matriarch of the modern age. Now, the time of separation came. Shakuntala went farewell to Dushanta since he summoned away to dispel the demons who are disrupting the evening lights. Dushanta too grieves the separation. Before leaving, Dushanta hands over his precious ring to Shakuntala as a mark of her love and assuring her to meet soon. In this way, Dushanta went away into his usual life, living his beloved in an absolute melancholy. Shakuntala tells her friend, O oh, Sakis, what will I do without him? He has left me so alone. Moreover, I am bearing Dushanta's child in my womb. Priyamvara says, I am just worried about how Father Sanva which we have from learning about these demons. Anuskari Shabhi assures, I hope Father will understand and bless you for your upcoming life.
Shakuntala, along with the seers, arrived at the court of Dushanta in Hastinapur. The court was full of courtiers, and King Dushanta was seated on his royal throne. At that time, the seer, accompanied Shakuntala, entered in the court, announcing that they had come from the Ha Hermitage of Sage Kanpur. The king was surprised to hear this and wondered that what business does Kanpur wants to play? Shakuntala entered, covered in a veil that made Dushanta curious, but also he was amazed by the beauty. The seers reminded the king about his Gandhava marriage with Shakuntala in Kanpur's hermitage. They added that Shakuntala was bearing the child of Dushanta, the next heir to his throne. With that, Shakuntala unveils herself and reveals her face to him. Dushanta was disgustingly shocked and angry. Dushanta says, What kind of propositions are being imposed on me? You want to say that I am married to this lady? These words were like fire to Shakuntala's ears. She breaks down and thinks that how can her beloved forget her? She says, You ignoble man, what can I say when such a love changes his face? Dushanta says, why is that sinful thought? Why are you here to ruin your family's honor and make me feel proud? Shakuntala says, If your behavior is such that I am someone else's wife, then I can show you the highly priced ring. Shakuntala realizes that the ring is missing from her finger. She laments, Ha! Huh, I am doomed! The ring is missing from my finger. You shut the mocking with this. Tell them exact for a great deal that this woman can give me. But such honey words may meet their ends, but I am not one of them. I have nothing to have in my life. Shakuntala covers her face and breaks down. Sarnagarbha, the seer, gets angry that why the king is behaving like that. He says that the king should either accept Shakuntala or to abandon her. Shakuntala was surprised and says to Sarnagarbha, after all these incidents, even they are betraying her. They thought that what would Kanda do to her after being abandoned, a stain on the family. Shakuntala with a heavy heart cries out, O oh, gracious goddess mother God, please open wide and take me in. Having been insulted, Shakuntala leaves the court.
Shakuntala was taken away by a maid to the heaven after she was abandoned. Then she met her biological mother Menna. Eventually, she gave birth to the son of Dushyanta, that is Bharata, who was destined to rule the world. Dushyanta enters accompanied by Mathurya. In Hastinapur, Dushyanta regrets for his insulting behavior towards Shakuntala that he did in the court full of people. All the memories of their love, their secret marriage were hitting his mind. He grieves for his beloved forever as she was taken away by a nymph from the palace garden after she was abandoned. This spring festival that took place annually was called off. In between, six years have passed. Two lovers always reunite to make a new beginning. 